Hi everyone, it's Dave here from davestravelpages.com and in this video we're going to take a look at the Brooks Cambium C17 saddle and see if it's any good for bike touring. So this is the Brooks Cambium C17 saddle. It's made from a natural vulcanised rubber and organic cotton canvas and it's supposed to be waterproof, maintenance free, built for a lifetime and ready to ride and immediately comfortable. Basically there's no braking in period like there is with the leather saddles. Now this leads me to a thought, is this basically the vegan equivalent of the famous Brooks B17 leather saddle? Well let's take a closer look and find out. So before I go on with the review, I should say that this is a saddle that I've actually used. Um, I used it on my last bike tour here in Greece and it was about a six or seven hundred kilometre cycle ride. So it's, uh, there's no point in reviewing a saddle that I've not used or just taken out the box. So this is sort of after using it for six or seven hundred kilometres and sort of the review and my opinion is going to be based on that. It's probably also why you can see there, uh, the saddle seems to be a bit faded or it's picked up some dust. From far back, it doesn't really look you know, like it's picked anything up, but when you get a bit closer, you can see it. I don't think it means anything. As I said, it's made of canvas, so I mean, it's what you expect really. As you can see, it's got some rivets there, and I didn't notice this before, but if I turn it around, can you see that one says Stanforth? That's the name of the bike that I'm riding. So I'm guessing that the guy has um, got his own rivets put on the, on the saddle, which is a nice touch. And I didn't realize that before now. So there we go. Uh, anyway, so it's got the rivets at the back and a rivet at the front there. Um, I think that's very similar to the B17 leather saddle. And I'm actually going to put a B17 next to it uh, in, a, in a little bit so you can compare the two. So what are the key features then? As I mentioned, it's made of a vulcanized rubber and it, the rubber is on the inside here. So that means, let's see if we can make this, so you can see it's, it's moving. And if we turn it over and I press down on it, can you see it flexing? And it's probably not a very good example of trying to get it to flex really. Let's see if we can do it by hand. But it does flex slightly in the hand. Yeah, you can't really tell on the video. You can trust me for it, it flexes slightly. Now the thing with that is, I believe um, it kind of flexes as you're sitting on it. So I'm not sure if this would, uh, if you're a, a rider who's a slightly heavier, and maybe I'm a rider that's slightly heavier, uh, maybe you're gonna have a different experience than if you're a lighter rider, for example. Um, also, it's not going to hold a shape. Uh, because it's, um, it's rubber, it's just going to bounce back. So unlike the leather saddle, which kind of molds itself to you, this is going to uh, stay basically the same shape and just sort of spring back. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, what else can we say about it? Yeah, the surface is, uh, is kind of a little bit rough. Um, I think that would be quite good, actually, if you were going to commute with it as well. Um, you could, you know, I mean, you could just wear regular clothes with it, wouldn't be too bad. Some people have suggested that if it gets wet, it might stain, um, it, it might cause the, the fabric here to leach some, um, some colour and stain what you're wearing. I didn't experience that myself uh, because it didn't rain during my tour. So it's something to keep in mind, but not something that I could confirm one way or the other. Uh, what else do we need to know about that? I mean, that's about it really. It's, uh, it's reasonably lightweight and I'm going to get you some uh, weight details and I'll put them in the description below if you're interested in the weight. Uh, but that's about it really. So let's uh, compare that to a B17 saddle and let's just have a look at the difference between the two. Okay then, so we've now got the B17 leather saddle to the left of it. And well, you can probably see that they're two very different beasts really. The main difference is that on the leather saddle, uh, this comes down and on the canvas saddle, it doesn't. So that's something to keep in mind. And uh, I prefer the leather saddle and I'll go into more details why at the end. Uh, the rivet structure is slightly different. Uh, these rivets are more flush to the surface, whereas these rivets definitely stick out. So that's something to think about. Um, this is, I think the leather one's slightly heavier, but it's not like it's a kilo heavier. But again, I'm going to get you the weight details. And I should say that the leather saddle is one that I'd used on my other, other bike tour, and that's had about uh, 3,000 or even 4,000 kilometers use. And you can see that it's shaped itself rather strangely to the shape of my, of my backside, um, which, like I said, is something that um, the C17 saddle is not going to do. It's going to spring back. Now, once you've worn the leather saddle in, it's extremely comfortable, or at least I think it is. Not everyone gets on with a leather saddle. I mean, I, I just think that that works for me. Um, 
Now on the tour that I did, I just couldn't get comfortable on the C17 saddle. It, uh, it didn't matter what I tried. I had it spirit level straight. I had it tilted forward. I had it tilted back. I just couldn't get comfortable. And I, I don't really know why. Uh, I don't know if it was because of this um, extra side bit that's missing here. I don't know if that added, you know, if that's more comfortable for me personally. Um, it didn't seem to flex too much for me. So maybe uh, I'm at a weight where the flexing um, is negated, perhaps. I don't know. I'm about 83 kilos, I think, when I went on the tour. Um, but yeah, it just didn't seem very comfortable for me. Whereas the B17 saddle, although it looks uncomfortable, I mean, it looks like a piece of wood to be fair, but it's so comfortable once you've worn it in. So yeah, so the C17, it was nice to try out, um, but it wasn't for me. So who is the, B, uh, the C17 for then? Well, I think if you were a road cyclist and you were transitioning to bike touring, I think you'd probably sit on this saddle and go, wow, this is incredible, especially if you'd never tried a leather saddle before. Um, if you have uh, sort of like an ethical concern about using leather, obviously um, this is gonna be a much better saddle, the, C, uh, the C17, which is why I called it the vegan choice. And I, I don't mean that disparagingly, I mean, it kind of is a vegan choice, isn't it really? Um, so who else would use it? That would be about it really. I mean, the other people that would use it would be those that have used the leather saddle before, were unhappy with it, but now want to test out another saddle. So maybe this is another option. I mean, this saddle is still miles better than any gel saddle you're gonna get. It's probably, you know, it's probably better than almost every other saddle out there on the market, except for, of course, a good leather saddle, which is what Brooks are famous for. So I think Brooks have, it, it must be very difficult being a company that has this one incredible product that is just, you know, a hundred years old and stands the test of time. And, but you need to, you need to be innovative. And once you've brought a Brooks saddle, you're not going to buy another one for like 20 years. I was speaking to somebody on the YouTube channel the other day, and he said that he had a Brooks saddle that he's been using for 20 years. He just looks after it and, and you know, it, it, it lasts. Would the Canvas C17 last 20 years? I don't think so. I really don't think so. I saw another guy's YouTube video and there was some fraying at the front here. I'm not entirely sure what he'd been doing with it, but this had been frayed. Um, you know, like how a pair of jeans can fray at the bottom and this had all come out. Uh, you can probably find it on YouTube if you look for it. I, I can't remember the guy's name actually, so I, I can't link to the, the YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, so that's something to keep in mind. I just don't think that uh, this would have the same kind of lifespan as the leather saddle. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's all I can say as a review. I think it's a nice saddle. It looks nice. I think it would appeal to road cyclists transitioning to bike touring. It would appeal to people that don't want to use a leather saddle. It wasn't for me. I didn't find it comfortable. Um, and that's all I've got to say. Uh, I hope you like the review. It's uh, one of those things where anything you review really is your, your own personal sort of take on it and your own personal experience. And that was mine. So if you like the video, thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you next time. Cheers for now.